Everything seems so perfectly normal this morning. A group of school kids heading off to class as usual. But on closer inspection, the bridge they're crossing is much more than a simple construction spanning the two shores. It's a dike, a succession of dams that are able to ward off the storms blowing in from the North Sea and prevent flooding. This is Zeeland in the south of the Netherlands. And to think this region almost disappeared off the map. In 1953, the islands were inundated by a tidal wave. Close to 2,000 deaths, 500,000 people were affected. Fifty years later, it seems the Dutch have learned their lesson, and then some. Regulate the water, an absolute necessity. Zeeland, the Achilles heel of Holland, a country so low that a third of its surface area lies below sea level. Without these dikes and these dunes, more than half the country would be underwater. Goodness gracious, you've got to be crazy to want to live in Holland. And yet everywhere, people can't stop talking about the rising sea level. We head north to Scheveningen, a sea resort near The Hague where we feel a bit safer. There's even a pier like the ones we find in England. But several breakwaters and a dike protect the city that was completely destroyed five centuries ago by a series of storms. We veer slightly inland for a typically Dutch landscape. Greenhouses and fields of tulips. A real national success. Except that horticultural development is limited by the lack of land and, once again, risks of flooding. It's a battle that's been going on for centuries. So as not to forget the toils of their ancestors, the Dutch have conserved the first windmills, without which it would have been impossible to dry out the land. And now for a little change of scenery. We head upriver, direction Rotterdam. A big city, the country's second largest, its eyes fixed resolutely on the sea, fixed on the future. The bridge is just one sign among many, it's named after Erasmus, who was born here. Modern and practical, Rotterdam gives off a feeling of strength and vitality. Avant-garde architects take their liberties, and your everyday citizen takes his or her liberties with life. You've got to admit that the local economy contributes to the good mood and sense of peace. Here we're in one of the world's largest ports, second only to Shanghai in China. It's crazy what comes through here. Over 30,000 ships unload 330 million tons of merchandise each year. There's certainly no shortage of work. Mile after mile of wharfs as far as the eye can see, refineries, storage warehouses, container terminals with a 30 kilometer radius stretching right up to the sea. This is Europort. Rotterdam's new port. Even from our bird's eye perspective, we feel a little lost. We're now nearing the Frisian coast. And we're dumbstruck by the lone roads that stretch right through the middle of the sea. Zealand is already a distant dream, and yet once again here in the old Zuiderzee, we find dikes that are even longer and straighter, forming new lakes here and reclaiming new land over there for building. In the polders, land reclaimed from the sea, the Dutch invent new kinds of dwellings and build developments where people live between land and water. You park your car on one side, and on the other, your boat. In a way, it's as if people's imaginations were stimulated by the constant battle with water. As if nature could actually be tamed. The 
waltz of the dams continues in Iselmere, just a hop, skip and a jump from the capital city of Amsterdam. City of bicycles, city of tolerance, city of silence, and especially of canals. The subsoil is marshy like in Venice, and a good many houses have been built on stilts. And finally, there's no place like the islands in the north near the German border, where the sea can romp to its heart's content. No barriers to stop it here. Suddenly, the hand of man seems curiously absent.